Good morning. We are thankful to Jesus for the peace we have from the gospel, the message that Christ has done everything to save us. Our sins are forgiven. We are heirs of eternal life. As we follow Jesus, we often encounter difficulties. And that's what God's word focuses our hearts and minds on today, what Jesus calls carrying our crosses for him. We'll worship the Lord by following the order of service as printed out in your service folder. As always, the hymns are found toward the back on the last few pages. We begin with the opening hymn, 355. A soloist will sing stanza one, and then we will join together to sing stanza two. Please stand. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. We have come into the presence of God who created us to love and serve him as his dear children. But we have disobeyed him and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to him and plead for his mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to his will. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord.
Let us pray. O Lord Jesus Christ, preserve the congregation of believers with your never-failing mercy. Help us avoid whatever is wicked and harmful, and guide us in in the way that leads to our salvation. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated. The first lesson from God's Word, which we consider this morning, is from the book of Jeremiah the prophet, chapter 15. The sermon will be based on this episode and words from the book of Jeremiah. O Lord, you understand. Remember me and care for me. Take vengeance for me on those who persecute me. You are slow to anger. Do not take me away. Keep in mind that for your sake I bear disgrace. Your words came to me and I devoured them. Your words became my joy, the delight of my heart, because I bear your name, O Lord God of armies. I did not sit with the band of partygoers, nor did I celebrate with them. I sat alone because your hand was upon me. You filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unending? Why is my wound incurable refusing to heal? Will you be as deceptive as an intermittent stream to me, like a source of water that a person can't depend on? Therefore, this is what the Lord says. If you repent, I will take you back so that you may stand before me. If what you say is worthwhile and not worthless, you will be my spokesman. They must turn to you, but you must not turn to them. I will make you like a bronze wall to this people. They will fight against you, but they will not overcome you. Because I am with you to save you and to rescue you, declares the Lord. I will rescue you from the hand of the wicked, and I will deliver you from the grasp of the ruthless. This is the word of the Lord. The psalm of the day is Psalm 121. The congregation will sing the refrain as it appears throughout the psalm. A soloist will sing the verses.
Christians are sometimes tempted to go down a different path instead of following Jesus so that there might not be hardship and difficulty. God's apostle, the apostle Paul, encourages us to remain true to our Savior because his cross is more valuable to us than anything else. From Galatians chapter 6. Those who want to look good in the flesh are the ones who are trying to compel you to be circumcised. Their only reason is so that they are not persecuted for the cross of Christ. As a matter of fact, those who are circumcised do not keep the law themselves, but they want to have you circumcised so that they can boast about your flesh. But far be it for me to boast, except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. In fact, in Christ Jesus, circumcision or uncircumcision does not matter. What matters is being a new creation. Peace and mercy on those who follow this rule, namely on the Israel of God. This is the word of the Lord. We sing the verse of the day. We stand for the gospel lesson. In the lesson for today from Matthew 16, we hear our Savior speak about the cross that he bore for us to save us from sin and then his command to us to bear our crosses for him. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he had to go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders, chief priests, and experts in the law and be killed and on the third day be raised again. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, May you receive mercy, Lord. This will never happen to you. But Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a snare to me, because you are not thinking the things of God, but the things of men. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone wants to follow me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. In fact, whoever wants to save his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. After all, what will it benefit a person if he gains the whole world but forfeits his soul? Or what can a person give in exchange for his soul? This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. We go to the children's message. Good morning, children, and everybody else. So I have here a gift that my wife had made for me some time ago. It's a, it's a little cross. It's carved out of wood. It was hand-carved by a member of the congregation we served at the time. And it's, it's meant to be worn like this. Now, when I wear this little cross, sometimes I think about Jesus' passage or what Jesus said in the gospel lesson that Pastor Brower just read. Jesus said, if anyone wants to follow me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. So is that what Jesus meant? Did Jesus mean if we're going to be believers that we got to wear a wooden cross around our neck as we walk around? No, that's not at all what Jesus meant. When Jesus said, if we want to follow him, we must take up our cross and follow him, he meant that if we're going to believe in Jesus and follow him, then we should be prepared because there will be pain and suffering in life. Just like the cross brought pain and suffering to Jesus, so sometimes it's going to be very hard on us to be believers in Jesus. Now, Sometimes when we suffer, it's not going to feel like a little cross like this. It will feel more like this. 
Like you actually have to carry around a heavy wooden cross. Sometimes the things that we suffer because we're believers feel heavy, like burdens on us, not light like a little cross. Let me give you an example. Let's say you go to a restaurant with your mom and dad, back when we used to go to restaurants, and you sit down to, to eat and you pray before you eat your food. That's what you always do. But this time, while you're in the restaurant, somebody looks at you funny because your family's praying. That might feel like a little cross. Yeah, they're picking on you. They think it's weird that you believe in Jesus and you pray to him. But that's not extremely hurtful to us. But then let's say you tell your best friend that you love Jesus and you're going to church and he no longer wants to be your friend anymore. Oh, that can feel like a very heavy cross. That really hurts. And it all happened because we believe in Jesus. Well, you might say to yourself, if it's going to hurt to follow Jesus, why should I do this? Well, Jesus makes some amazing promises to you and me. Not only does Jesus promise that he loves you and he forgives all your sins by dying on his cross, but Jesus promises you that he'll give you comfort as you suffer for him. Jesus promises that he'll give you strength to carry your cross as you suffer for him. And of course, Jesus points our eyes ahead to heaven and he says, after we carry our crosses, we will be with him forever in heaven. And he is so pleased as we carry our crosses for him. So may God always give us the strength and the willingness to follow Jesus and to carry our cross. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, you carried your cross to forgive all of our sins, and we thank you for that. Lord, let us be willing to follow you even when it becomes hard, even when it makes us suffer and hurt on the inside and outside. But Lord, we ask that you would comfort us, that you give us strength to lift these burdens that are placed on us. And Lord, let us glorify you, make you happy in what we do uh, as we carry our cross and keep us thinking about that home in heaven we have with you. In your name we pray, amen. We continue with the next hymn.
Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Savior Jesus Christ. Dear friends, let's consider today a portion of our gospel lesson, but really we'll consider that in light of our Old Testament lesson. So that's our focus for today, and it actually would be good for us to have that Old Testament lesson in front of us. I'll refer back to it almost verse by verse as we go through our sermon today. Dear friends in Christ, Christianity, according to our gospel lesson for today, involves the cross in two ways. Jesus' cross and yours. Jesus had to actually carry a physical cross upon which he suffered agony in his soul to pay for the sins of the world. And what Jesus endured was torturous and it was painful. And those things happened to Jesus because, precisely because, he is the Christ. And the way that Jesus endured that cross brought glory to God and salvation to mankind. If Jesus had not carried the cross, his cross, as he did, then we would have no Savior. So instrumental, so essential was the cross to Jesus being the Christ that we could say it this way, no cross, no Christ. And then our gospel lesson for today, Jesus tells us that Christians also must carry a cross. Jesus said in the gospel lesson, if anyone wants to follow me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. To follow Jesus is to believe in him. It's to trust that he forgives our sins and to be moved to imitate and glorify him in the way we live our lives. And friends, if we are going to imitate Christ in the way we live, then you can count that we will find hardship and suffering just as Jesus did. And that's a part of being a Christian. It's so part of being a Christian that it can be said, no cross, no Christian. Since Christians have to carry a cross, we probably should know what a cross is. A cross is any burden or any suffering that you endure because of your faith in Jesus Christ. Not all suffering is a cross, but it's that suffering that comes to you because of your faith. That is a cross. Sometimes our crosses force us to wrestle with what we see in life and what the promises of God declare because they seem to be at odds with each other. One pastor I know said it this way, a cross is whatever happens in life that makes a believer cry out, where are you, O God? Crosses can come into our lives from a number of different places. First, people in our lives, other people can bring crosses into our life. When you are mocked, when you're ridiculed, rejected because of your faith by other people, that's a cross. And other people are rejecting you precisely because of your faith in Jesus. That's what makes it a cross. Living in this sinful world is another place that puts crosses upon our shoulders. Because this world has a culture and values that are opposed to God's word and opposed to us who follow God's word. And that causes suffering. That's a cross. Finally, the last place I want us to consider where crosses come from is found in denying self. As Jesus says, take, deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. See, we are, we are all born selfish and sinful. And that selfish and sinful part of us in Scripture is called the flesh or the old self. And Jesus says that part of following him, part of taking up the cross, is denying self, denying those sinful desires that are such a part of us. And if we are going to deny those desires of the sinful flesh, believe me, it will cause us to struggle and suffer in this life. And yet the reason why we don't give in, the reason why we don't say, oh, I'm sick of fighting, I'm just going to give in to this desire, 
is precisely because of our faith in Jesus. And therefore, denying self becomes a cross. Now, being a, carrying a cross for a believer is not optional. It is something that happens to us. It's, Jesus says it's part of being a believer. In fact, it's been that way for all of God's people since the fall. Even in the Old Testament. If in the Old Testament you were somebody who listened to the promises of God, you loved God, believed His Word, and were looking forward to the coming Savior, then it brought hardship and suffering into your life. And today we have a great example of that in the prophet Jeremiah. Today we'll see how Jeremiah carried and even fell under the weight of his cross. But as we look at Jeremiah, let us learn from him. Let us learn how to carry our cross from Jeremiah. Jeremiah was a young man when God called him to serve as a prophet. And Jeremiah's ministry was long and difficult. He served nearly 41 years preaching to the people of Judah until finally Judah was destroyed by the nation of Babylon. And it's said that Jeremiah went down to Egypt with some of the other remnants of Israel. Thankfully, Jeremiah was someone who knew how he felt about God and how he felt about God's people, the people of Israel. And for us, I am glad that Jeremiah did not hesitate to share those feelings. Jeremiah loved being one of God's chosen people. Jeremiah loved being a Jew. But even more than that, Jeremiah loved the Lord. And he loved God's word. In our text for today, we see Jeremiah express his love for God. Let's look at verse 16. Jeremiah wrote, Your words came to me, and I devoured them. Your words became my joy, the delight of my heart, because I bear your name, O Lord God of armies. Think about things that you devour. Probably would lead you to think of your favorite foods, right? Right? And that's what God's word was to Jeremiah. It was his favorite. He loved to devour it, consume it, to read it. And those words in Jeremiah's mind and heart, they filled his heart with joy. Jeremiah had delight in his heart because he bore God's name. Or literally, according to the Hebrew, Jeremiah said he had delight in his heart because God called his name upon him. What we have here in verse 16 is Jeremiah's confession of faith. He was a believer who loved God's word. And as a believer, Jeremiah had to carry a cross in his life. And Jeremiah's crosses came from the typical places that crosses come from, starting with his own fellow Jews. See, Jeremiah had to carry out a ministry in which he had to preach law to unfaithful fellow countrymen. He had to tell them that God was going to destroy their nation because of their sin and unbelief. Now you can imagine how popular that made him. And yet, God warned Jeremiah when he called him that this would be the case. Back in chapter 1, this is what God said to Jeremiah as he made him his prophet. He said, look, Today I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and to tear down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build up and to plant. So Jeremiah was to preach a message to uproot and to tear down, to overturn and to destroy. That's a healthy dose of law. Now you can imagine how the people like to hear that message. In fact, God even forewarned Jeremiah about that as well. In the same chapter, when God called Jer Jeremiah, this is what he said to him. They will fight against you, but they will not overcome you because I am with you to rescue you, declares the Lord. And fight against Jeremiah, they did. Listen to just few, a few of the things that happened to Jeremiah. First and foremost, when Jeremiah preached, the people ignored his message. They didn't listen. They didn't believe it. When Jeremiah preached, they even arrested him, 
publicly beat him and put him in the stocks in the middle of the church uh, courtyard, in the temple courtyards, for everybody to mock at him and laugh at him. He was ridiculed. They took Jeremiah's scrolls. They tore them up and burned them right in front of him. They threw Jeremiah into prison. And they even pronounced a death sentence over him. Jeremiah carried a heavy cross as he followed the Lord. And in our text for today, Jeremiah shows us or tells us what was going through his mind as he carried these crosses during his ministry. Look at verse 15. Jeremiah said, O Lord, you understand. Remember me and care for me. Take vengeance for me on those who persecute me. You are slow to anger. Do not take me away. Keep in mind that for your sake I bear disgrace. When Jeremiah said, the Lord understands, again, he uses a word that says, the Lord knows me inside and out. The Lord knows me intimately. And and because the Lord knew Jeremiah so well, Jeremiah was convinced that God could care for him if he wanted to. So he calls on God to do it. Jeremiah said, Lord, look, I know that you're patient. You're long-suffering. That's why I'm here. But Lord, even though you're patient, get revenge on those people who are hurting me. You can almost hear an anguished Jeremiah saying, where are you in this, Lord? Why am I the one suffering? Remember, it's for your sake that I'm doing this. I'm on your side. Jeremiah carried a heavy cross. And yet it wasn't just from his fellow countrymen that Jeremiah found suffering. Jeremiah also had to deny self. See, he's no different in his makeup than you and I. He had a sinful flesh as well. And he's also a person who loved his fellow countrymen. And yet he couldn't be with them because of the sinful lives they were leading. And that caused struggle. That caused pain for Jeremiah. Listen to what he said in verse 17. He said, I did not sit with the band of partygoers, nor did I celebrate with them. I sat alone because your hand was upon me. You filled me with indignation. That hurt. But really, what made Jeremiah suffer the most was knowing what God was about to do to his beloved country, to his fellow countrymen. Jeremiah found it hard to believe that God was going to really allow an unbelieving nation like Babylon to come down and to wipe out God's chosen people. And this forced Jeremiah to struggle. Because on the one hand, he had the promises of God's love, that God had a Savior coming through this nation. And yet on the other hand, it looked like God was turning his back on the nation, that he's going to just wipe them out. That caused wrestling. It was a cross. And listen to how Jeremiah felt. That cross caused him real pain. In verse 18, Jeremiah says, Why is my pain unending. Why is my wound incurable, refusing to heal? Jeremiah was hurting. And as Jeremiah struggled under the weight of this cross, he ends up stumbling and falling into sin. Jeremiah questions the Lord. He begins to doubt, even accuses God of being unloving. Continuing in verse 18, this is what Jeremiah says against the Lord. He said, will you be as deceptive as an intermittent stream to me, like a source of water that a person can't depend on? Paraphrasing, Jeremiah said to the Lord, God, are you just going to be one of those people who promises things and never delivers? God, do you say things that you really don't mean? See, under the weight of that cross, trusting God was hard for Jeremiah. When Jeremiah felt the pain and suffering of carrying his cross in life, 
he let go of the promises of God, the very promises that give comfort and strength. And when he did, he stumbled and fell. Dear friends in Christ, let's consider how this applies to you and me. We're not all that much unlike Jeremiah in the sense that God has called his name upon you and me. Not in the sense that we're prophets, but in your baptisms. The triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit placed his name, called his name upon you as you were baptized with water and the word. And in your baptisms, God not only placed his name on you, he cleansed you of your sin, wrapped you in Christ's righteousness, and made you his own child. And as as his child, God, our Heavenly Father, brought you his word throughout your life. And when that word came to you, you devoured it. You ate it up. You put it in your head and in your hearts. So, that, so much so that we can gather here today as people who are fully convinced that Jesus paid for our sins so that we are forgiven and have the hope of eternal life. We can gather as believers because of God's grace. And yet as believers, we will also carry crosses in life. And our crosses will come from all the normal places that crosses come from. From other people, from the world we live in, and even from denying self. Friends, this world is so full of things that make us as believers suffer that we don't have to go looking for crosses. They will be placed onto us. They will find us. And when we carry those crosses, they can feel heavy and very painful. And like Jeremiah, when we face particularly painful crosses, we too will be tempted to stumble and to fall, to doubt and to question God, even to accuse God. God, why are you doing this to me? How how can you be loving? How can you say you're good when this horrible thing is happening to me and I am suffering in this way? When Jeremiah said something similar to God, God did not show up to Jeremiah and apologize for the pain and difficulty that Jeremiah was facing. God did not show up and say, oh, I'm so sorry, Jeremiah. Let me give you a little time off so you can get some R&R and then get back to it. God's response to Jeremiah was very short and very direct. God said, repent. Look at verse 19 with me. God responds to Jeremiah, If you repent, I will take you back so that you may stand before me. If you say what is worthwhile and not worthless, you will be my spokesman. So Jeremiah said to God, I don't deserve the way you're treating me. And what Jeremiah didn't deserve was to be God's prophet. He let go of God's promises and God's word. So Jeremiah was out of line and without excuse. And yet, listen to what a merciful God gives to a repentant Jeremiah. To a Jeremiah who recognized the error of his ways, who turned from that sin, God promised blessings. Look at verse 20. God said to Jeremiah, I will make you like a bronze wall to this people. They will fight against you, but they will not overcome you, because I am with you to save you and to rescue you, declares the Lord. I will rescue you from the hand of the wicked, and I will deliver you from the grasp of the ruthless. A repentant Jeremiah was restored as God's prophet. He would continue to proclaim God's message to his people, and yet nothing would change. It's not like God said, well, now they'll listen and they'll treat you better. No, Jeremiah would still face rejection by his own people. But this time, Jeremiah would go forward with the comfort of forgiveness and with the promise that God would help him prevail, that God would strengthen him to carry his cross as he served the Lord. Friends, when we are carrying our cross and we stumble and fall under its weight, 
complaining against God, accusing, questioning, blaming God for our pain and suffering. We don't deserve to have God show up and apologize to us. What we deserve is to have God actually add to that pain by separating from us for all eternity. But that's thankfully not what our gracious God does. Instead, God gives to us what we don't deserve, grace. And God gives us that grace because of Christ who carried a cross perfectly in our place. Jesus delighted in God as his heavenly Father. He devoured the Word of God. And that Word of God filled his heart with joy. And it led him to serve the Lord faithfully. Even when that service led to rejection and mockery and ridicule, even when that service led him to carry an actual cross upon which he would die, Jesus never doubted or accused God of being unloving. Instead, Jesus carried that cross into death so that he might forgive all of our sins, so that he would forgive the times that we have stumbled and fallen under the weight of the crosses that we carry in life. So let's hear God's word today and let us repent. Let us completely change the way we think about suffering in life, especially that suffering that comes as a result of our faith. Let us turn from accusing and and being angry with God for that suffering. Let us turn from that sin and instead embrace that forgiveness that Christ won for us by carrying his own cross. And friends, looking at Christ, let us then be encouraged to deny self, take up our cross, and follow Jesus knowing that he will give us comfort and strength to do so just like he did for Jeremiah. Amen. Please stand. Now may the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us continue by confessing the unity of our Christian faith by speaking the words of the Apostles' Creed. We confess, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please remain standing as we join together in prayer. We include in our prayers this morning a prayer of thanksgiving on behalf of Margo Hempel, who has completed six months of cancer treatments and is thankful to Jesus for his gift of life for body and for soul. Let us pray. Lord God, our maker and preserver, we praise and thank you for all that you give us day after day. You have given us your precious word to nourish our souls and to protect us from the temptations of the devil, the world, and our sinful nature. Heavenly Father, we pray that you shield us from every kind of danger sudden catastrophe, terrors of crime, and the pain of disease. Watch over those who travel by land, sea, and air. Keep our loved ones from whatever perils may threaten them. Be 
Bless our land, our people, and those who hold offices of high trust. Keep our government and schools upright and strong for the advancement of good citizenship and useful vocations, that we may enjoy your gifts of peace, security, and well-being. Compassionate Father, we thank you for sustaining our Christian sister, Margot Hempel, throughout her cancer treatment. You carried her in your gracious arms and showed your deep love in Christ to her. We praise you for using the treatment she received to curb any remaining cancer in her body. Continue to bring healing to her body and preserve Margot in her trust in you. We thank you, too, for the many Christians who supported her over the past six months. Hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. We bring these requests before you in the name of Jesus, our Lord, and ask you to hear us. Take all that we have, our bodies and minds, our time and skills, our ministries and offerings, and use them to your glory. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. O Lord God, our Heavenly Father, pour out the Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us strong in your grace and truth, Protect and comfort us in all temptation, and bestow on us your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Brothers and sisters, go in peace, live in harmony with one another, and serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you, The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. You may be seated for the closing hymn. We will sing the hymn stands as indicated.
May our loving Savior Jesus give each of us strength in the week ahead to carry our crosses for him. We thank the soloists who served us in services 8 o'clock and 10.30 this morning, also our organist, for using her gifts to glorify her Savior. We have started adult Bible classes and in-person Bible study this morning on the book of Hebrews. Members may still join that at any point. We also have an online Zoom Bible study on Thursdays in the morning at 10.30 and then repeated at 7. If that's something of interest to you, you can ask me for some more information. Please know, too, that next Sunday we will have a door collection for the Lutheran Women's Missionary Society. That's a group connected with our Trinity Women in Service that supports mission work at home and abroad. May our Lord Jesus bless you today and in the week ahead.